Uh, thank you, Ricky and uh, LSC, Alfred Horhausen uh, Foundation, for helping us organ. I mean, being the support and helping us to realize this dream uh, of having uh, urban age in Addis Ababa. Um, Addis Ababa, as you know, is uh, one of the youngest capitals of the country, and uh, it's an indigenously grown African city which developed spontaneously in its early urban years of formation. The structure of Addis Ababa was that of a multi-center town with suffers. A suffer is an area similar to a military settlement or camp which, are located, which is allocated to a chief or a state dignitary and appears distinguishable from other similar areas. Almost all the residents of the nobility were built on top of small hills and eventually surrounded by the humble tukuls or cottages of their followers and servants. The structure of Addis Ababa at the beginning of the 20th century was that of a multi-centered settlement with the Gibi, the imperial palace uh, compound, the Arada, the marketplace, the main marketplace, and the railway station areas in the church compounds of the, uh, were the main land, um, landmarks. In 1936, when Italy occupied Ethiopia, Mussolini, the then leader, based on his ideas of demographic colonization, dreamed of settling hundreds of thousands of Italians in the fertile highlands of Ethiopia that would produce raw materials and food to the, and be exported to Italy. The Italian master plan, which was based on the fascist leadership's ideals, tried to use urbanity as a means of showing Italian presence and domination. It also used architecture and planning as one of its main acts of modernizing a traditional society by displaying colonial power and superiority. Segregation between Italian and indigenous quarters was one of its main features. A green iron plan uh, was uh, superimposed on the organic structure of the existing city. Even after the Italian occupation, the master plan of the Mercato Indigeno, the traditional Ethiopian markets, special organization where commodities are allocated to designated areas persisted. Some years uh, ago, uh, uh, in Addis Ababa, one can still observe the traditional looking settlements besides the medium and high rise buildings. Unlike most African cities, Addis Ababa's social fabric is still or was still mixed between rich and poor, which are uh, which, uh, unfortunately, uh, the growing, uh, in growing urbanization, new real estate developments, uh, these developments are exclusively for the upper or middle income groups, and then came the condominium housing and so on. As a result, a, res a gradual segregation started to happen. In the last 15 years, massive urban transformation is taking place in Addis Ababa. The construction of roads, high-rise buildings, and condominium housing blocks are transforming the city dramatically. The Grand Housing Project, which started in 2005, is one of the most ambitious government programs in social housing the city has ever seen. And in this last decade, hundreds of thousands of condominium housing units were built in an effort to alleviate chronic housing, so housing shortage. These urban development efforts are major achievements by any standards and should be appreciated. This, this was uh, the, the aim of this uh, grand housing program, uh, you know, uh, removal of uh, slum areas or renewal of slum areas, densification against horizontal expansion, creation of jobs enabling the urban poor. These were the aims. And Eventually, this does not only uh, uh, end in the central area, in the outskirts, also expansion happened in the city. So growing economic pressure has led to further elimination of the older housing stock. 
and displacement of residents and the loss of urban heritage. The old inner city residential neighborhoods of Addis Ababa are not only, did not only provide housing at rents that could be afforded by low income residents, but provided within these settlements a wide variety of employment opportunities, formal and informal, formal and informal. These areas which are characterized by intensive mixed use are also a major econo of major economic importance. Many households also run small-scale commercial activities. The, while, this, uh, yeah, while this was going on, the seductive images of modern high-rise shiny developments are irresistible to officials and real estate developments. These large-scale high-rise urban developments are too expensive and unrealistic for most African cities. The reality tells us that these developments are unaffordable and a drain on the urban economy and require massive hard currency. The cleared plots acquired by investors by bidding uh, and leasehold end up being very expensive. Developers have to build densely to meet their expensive and, uh, and expenses and make profit. High land prices discourage the creation of open spaces, which are essential to the urban quality and habitability of the city. And in the last few years, infra in the last years, we have seen also the infrastructure and the railway. Uh, uh, so there, is, there isn't much discourse or debate among planners, architects, and engineers on how to plan and develop our cities. Decision makers are neither adequately informed, inadequately informed, and do not wait for alter alternative solutions and approaches. We do not understand and process the real life experience which is right in front of us and look for solutions elsewhere. As latecomers, we had the chance to learn from the mistakes of others, but we still are attracted to these flashy images. After the establishment of the Chair of Conservation of Urban and Architectural Heritage, we're trying to do research and collaborative planning with the Addis Ababa Plan Commission to understand and save historic areas of Addis Ababa. Through our research, we have realized that the protection of heritage in our cities does not simply uh, imply saving few old buildings of the past, but also retaining the vibrant, multi-layered street life which already existed in our cities. We are now at the stage where there is very little remaining, such as the parts of Piazza, and Kazanches, like the one I show here. So understanding the importance of uh, urban heritage is not only saving architecture, but sa saving the multi-layered, uh, uh, you know, uh, wealth of the city. Thank you. Thank you, Faisal, and we will come back to that collectively to think about what does it mean to think consciously uh, about our planning at a moment of rapid transition.